In this video, we'll discuss using Excel for regression. In this example, I've got data with two variables and 10 observations for each variable that are paired. This is similar to what you're asked to do in the first discussion forum for this week. In this case, the variable I want to predict is a student grade on timed assessment number one for this class. This actually is data from our class, but I've randomly selected just 10 observations so nobody can identify their specific data for sure. So that will be my Y variable, which is also called the dependent variable. The X variable, or the predictor that I'm going to use, is the total of the grades on the first four weekly assessments. This will be my independent variable. So I want to estimate a regression model that predicts timed assessment grade based on weekly assessment total. I've got the data in Excel. What you may have to do first is add in the data analysis tools to Excel. If you look on the data rib ribbon and it, you don't have a data analysis option at the far right, then you need to add this tool in. To do this, you would go to File, Navigate to Options, and then Add-ins. All you need to do on the Add-ins page is look toward the bottom where it says manage Excel add-ins and click on go. The box that comes up shows the add-ins. The one that we're, we will need to do regression analysis is the analysis tool pack. Later in the class, we will be using the solver add-in, or you may have used this in the first couple of weeks as well. I'm going to go ahead and check the solver add-in. Once I click OK, these will appear at the far right of the data ribbon. I'm ready to run regression. So we'll select Data Analysis, and scroll down to Regression and click OK. The Regression box comes up, and the two things that we need to specify are the Y range and the X range. The Y range is the dependent variable. That's the variable that we are trying to predict. The X range is the independent variable, the predictor. Later, we'll have multiple X variables. And when we do regression in Excel, we'll have to organize our data so that all those variables are in columns right next to each other. With the cursor in the input Y range box, I'll highlight the timed assessment data, and I'll go ahead and highlight the label, which will give me a better description on the report. I'll put the cursor in the input X range box and highlight the label plus the 10 observations for weekly assessment total. And then I'll check the box for labels because I highlighted row 1, which does include the labels for the data. There are several options in the regression box, but the only one at this point I'm going to select is where to put the output. You have the option of either putting the output in the current worksheet by using output range, or simply selecting a new worksheet. I'll go ahead and select a new worksheet. And 
and call it regression output. These are the only options that we're going to use right now. So with this highlighted, I'll click OK. You see down at the bottom of the screen is my regression output. My original tab was called data and it also appears. This is the Excel regression output. The first thing that we're going to focus on is the area labeled coefficients. So the coefficients are on lines 17 and 18. The first coefficient is the intercept. Our textbook calls this the B0 value. And in this case it's 27.3. I'm just going to round to one decimal place. The slope coefficient is what our textbook call, labels the B1 coefficient. And that is the coefficient in this case on the X variable, which is weekly assessment total. So the regression equation that we have developed here is that Y equals 27.3 plus 1.27 times X. In words, that is that the predicted timed assessment number one grade is 27.3 plus 1.27 times the total of all four weekly assessment grades. As an example, if we had a total of one, uh, excuse me, a total of 50 on weekly assessment grades, the predicted timed assessment number one grade, predicted Y, would be 27.3. plus 1.27 times 50, or 90.8. In the discussion form, you're asked to draw some conclusions about how good a predictor the x variable is for the y variable. In this case, we can look at a couple of things on the output to help. The r squared value is also called the coefficient of determination. In this case, it's interpreted as the fact that 37.6% of the variation in the Y variable is explained by the X variable. For this problem, 37.6% of the variation in timed assessment one is explained by the weekly assessment grades. It doesn't sound high, and certainly there are probably other factors that affect the time assessment number one grades. Ability, for instance. But we can't, we don't, we aren't always necessarily concerned about having a low or high R square. Sometimes there's just a lot of variation that's unexplained. But if we're comparing two models, we might prefer the one with the higher R squared as long as it has the same number of X variables. We can also look at the F statistic and the P value for the F, F statistic. This states whether the model itself is significant and at what level. Generally, levels of significance are 10%, 5%, or 1%. In other words, if we see a p-value here in this cell that's less than 10%, that means our model is significant at the 10% level. If we see one less than 5%, it's significant at the 5% level. A way to think about that is that there's only a 5% chance with a p-value of 5% that we're using a model that really doesn't work. 
So in this case, the p-value is almost 6%. So the model is reasonably significant in terms of using weekly assessment to predict timed assessment. Because there's only one x variable in this model, the p-value that appears on the line with the coefficient for weekly assessment is the same as the f-statistic. But once we get into models with more than one x variable, this will change. Be sure to look at the textbook for more information about the coefficient of determination and the f-statistic and the p-values for the t-statistics on the coefficients. What are some limitations of this model? Well, there's no doubt other variables that affect timed assessment number one grade. Your performance in prerequisites, underlying ability level, effort, and another number of other variables in all likelihood affect the grades on the timed assessments. But it looks like we've found one variable that's reasonab a reasonably good predictor in this case of the timed assessment grade.